Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and this is You Make the Call. We're going to show you an image. We'll have two different uh, axial or coronal or 3D or whatever planes, and then I'm going to ask you what the best answer is. So without any further ado, let's get started. This patient had back pain, and the study was done to rule out dissection. What do you think? Well, you look at the aorta, and the aorta looks okay, at least what we see of it. There's no pericardial effusion. But what about the esophagus? Look how dilated the esophagus is. There's also food in there and fluid. I guess you have to think maybe there's obstruction. Maybe there's a tumor, though I don't see one, of the esophagus or GE junction. Maybe the patient has reflux, but this is essentially too much material for reflux. Reflux usually is fluid. It's markedly dilated. What are you thinking about? Everything else looks good in this patient. Achalasia. Achalasia, dilated esophagus, lots of food and fluid. Uh, often achalasia presents with aspiration, can present with pneumonia, can present with underlying tumor. Sometimes it presents with chest pain, and in this case, presents as if the patient might be having a dissection. An important differential point. This patient presented with a cough. It's a child about 10 years of age. The first thing to recognize is, what are you actually seeing? People thought this was lymphoma because there's something in the anterior metastinum and the posterior metastinum and the middle metastinum. The first thing to recognize in a patient who's 9 to 12 or even 15, something smooth homogeneous in the anterior metastinum is likely an enlarged thymus, which this indeed is. But what's going around the airways? The airways are narrowed. There's nodes, but the nodes have faint calcification. Yes, you surely have to think of lymphoma or some malignancy compressing the trachea. You're not thinking of a primary tracheal or bronchial tumor. But then when you have the calcifications present, you got to be thinking perhaps inflammatory, TB, histoplasmosis, something in that ballpark is what you need to be thinking about. Obviously, you're going to need bronchoscopy and biopsy. Could you still be f fooled by lymphoma? To be honest, the answer is unlikely, but it's still a possibility. So what do you think? If you said histoplasmosis with a normal thymus, you were correct. There are some beautiful 3D images in this case of narrowing of the airways, but the nodes with calcification and infiltration put you toward an inflammatory rather than neoplastic process. But again, biopsy was critical. Patient with a cough. What are you thinking here? Well, first of all, I'm giving you an axial CT and then what looks like virtual colonoscopy and a big polyp. But what you're seeing is a mass in the trachea, and that's an endoluminal view of the patient's mass from below. So what are we dealing with? What gives you masses in the trachea? There are tumors, could be a squamous cell carcinoma, an ACC, an adenocystic carcinoma. Those are by far the two most common. It could be a large node pushing in, such as lymphoma. It could be benign tumors, fibromas, myxomas. It could be metastasis, perhaps. What is it? It's soft tissue density. It's not fluid. It's not vascular. Just keep thinking, but let me show you a list of all of the airway tumors. Here are some of the benign ones and quite a selection of possibilities. And here are the malignant ones. And the squamous cell is number one in frequency. And as I mentioned, the ACC, the adenocystic, are number two in frequency. And this was, ta -da, ta da an adenoid cystic carcinoma. Just a beautiful example, compressing, narrowing the airway, the tumors in the wall of the trachea. We think about the trachea in most cases as involvement by extension, lung cancer, lymphoma, other tumors, but you can think about primary tracheal malignancies. And this was a great case. And again, malignancies can be malignant, well, that's what they call malignancies, or benign tumors, as we had on that list.
This patient was for rule out the section and you have non-contrast and contrast enhanced scans. And you can see a mass on the right side of the heart. It's near the SVC. Is it coming from or involving the right atrium? Maybe the right ventricle. I will admit in this case, I'd like to see more images. I want to know where it's coming from. Could it be lymphoma simply coming from above or from below? Could it be a tumor by the heart border like a sarcoma? Angiosarcomas classically occur or rise in the patient's right atrium, can involve the right ventricle. Metastasis to this region is a possibility. What else could you think of? There's a whole bunch of things. If I would give you more images, I think you would do better. So I won't belabor the point here. This was an angiosarcoma. Just a great location. Angiosarcomas can involve the entire pericardium, but most commonly they begin on the right side by the right atrium. And so I would have thought of lymphoma. And when I reviewed this case, when I quizzed people on it, lymphoma was a possibility. Metastasis were a possibility. Remember, METs to the heart are 40 to 50 times more common than primary tumors. But this was an angiosarcoma, just a terrific case. This patient had a drop in hemoglobin. We were looking for source of bleed. What you notice in this case are several things. One is you see the left kidney, but you don't see the right kidney. And you see the bowel falls back into the renal fossa on the right. And within the bowel, you see an enhancing lesion. There are other enhancing lesions in the right adrenal gland. There's an enhancing lesion to the right of the liver and in the right little quadrant. So now you're saying, what gives you multiple vascular lesions, including to bowel? Well, when you have a missing kidney, it makes it easy. You got to be thinking about renal cell carcinoma, which goes to adrenal, goes to bowel, goes to mesentery, goes to omentum, goes to liver. You could think of other possibilities, other meds, neuroendocrine tumors. Um, it's hard to think of much, much else. You're not going to think of a bunch of AV malformations. There's no feeding vessels. Uh, the adrenal gland metastatic pheochromocytoma goes to nodes, but not to bowel. So what do you think? Final thought, ta-da, metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Here's a few more images you can see in the pelvis images to the small bowel as well. So remember when you're looking at metastatic or suspected metastatic renal cell, give IV contrast, do arterial phase as well as venous phase imaging, and look for metastasis to bowel. What about this case, abdominal pain? Two images, images on your right, but also on the left, you see what appears to be implants on the omentum. There's nodularity on the omentum. Now, if it was more extensive, you would surely say pseudomyxoma peritonei, but pseudomyxoma peritonei does not need to be that extensive. You can see it on the greater omentum. You can see it in both flanks. And what can do it? Colon cancer can do it, biliary tumors, pancreatic cancer, gastric cancer, ovarian cancer. But in this case, besides those incidental horseshoe kidneys, on the coronal view, you see what looks like a tubular mass in the right lower quadrant. And yes, you might consider Meckel's, but there's faint calcification. And with the pseudomyxoma type appearance on the omentum, you got to be thinking, aha, this is a mucosal of the appendix that explains the dilated appendix and explains the omentum. That's my best thought. Meckel's is one of the things that also can have malignancy and present with um, caking on the omentum. So that would be in the differential. This was mucosal appendix with pseudomyxoma peritonei. Just a wonderful case. Remember, look at the omentum always. At times, you can overcall things, particularly in a patient with cirrhosis, and look at the right lower quadrant, and that appendix with the calcification is just spectacular. This patient had an acute abdomen with drop in hemoglobin. And what you see is a large bleed in the abdomen. You see blood around the liver, blood around the spleen, but you see a large mass in the liver with central enhancement, which is bleeding. Without thinking, we always think about hepatic adenoma and hepatoma as the cause of bleed. Obviously trauma, patients on anticoagulant therapy, occasionally hemangiomas, at least by report, can do it. But when you're thinking about 
bleeding, you also should think about other tumors. Many tumors can bleed. One of the tumors you need to consider is melanoma. Melanoma surprisingly does present with bleeding from the liver. Melanoma can be cystic or solid, it can be multiple or can be large. Again, what's against hepatoma here is I don't see a cirrhotic liver, but you can have hepatomas in non cirrhotic livers. Hepatic adenomas in that ballpark. This was melanoma. What a great case of presentation of melanoma with acute abdomen with a large bleed from the liver, active bleed, and hemoperitoneum. What a great case. This is a tough case of a patient with fever. You see lesions in the liver and lesions in a large spleen. You also see nodes in the periodic region on the coronal views and on the axial views, and maybe even renal vein involvement. When you have involvement of the liver and spleen and malignancy, you gotta think of lymphoma. You gotta think about metastatic disease. Colon cancer would be one possibility, lung cancer. But lymphoma is my favorite thing. Other tumors you gotta think about are unusual things. Now, if the patient in this case I told you had AIDS, then what else gives you liver and spleen and large masses? Then it's things you gotta think about, infection like fungal, but this doesn't look like infection. The lesions are too large. Kaposi sarcoma comes up. If I gave you earlier images, you would see these lesions would have been vascular. Liver and spleen, you gotta think about Kaposi sarcoma. Again, metastasis, primary hepatoma with mess to the spleen, rare. Lymphoma, a good call. Sarcomas, possibly, but again, not really. Not really. Uh, what else? Uh, sarcoid, tuberculosis. But again, large masses, multiple masses. I like sarcoid. I like TB. I like histo. This was FUO, which pushes you to infection. But this patient did have AIDS, and the diagnosis was a Kaposi sarcoma. These are the earlier images. I gave you the venous. I wanted you to see the lesions better. Here you can see the lesions are a bit harder to see, but they're vascular, and they're infiltrating, and they're huge. And this was Kaposi sarcoma. Terrific case. What about this case? There are multiple liver lesions. Now, if you can see the cursor, you see that the mean is minus 70, which means it's fat. What gives you fatty liver lesions? The most common thing is lipoma. Now there are multiple, and someone did say when I was quizzing them, metastatic liposarcoma to the liver. Liposarcomas, which commonly occur in the retroperitoneum, but can also be in the musculoskeletal system, can give mets that contain fat, though that's pretty rare. Now this patient, I'll tell you, had no known malignancy, had abdominal pain, what would have helped you in this case is if I showed you the kidneys. What if I told you the patient also had tumors in the kidneys? Well, then you could say metastatic renal cell, but that doesn't make any sense. This is not hepatoma. Fatty tumors in the liver, you have to think about tuber sclerosis. And the fact the patient had tumors in the kidney, and yes, some of them contain fat, you gotta think about tuber sclerosis. So what was the answer? Tuber sclerosis. Hepatic lipomas and renal AMLs. We see lots of cases of renal AMLs. I don't see many cases of hepatic lipomas. So this is one of the better cases. In fact, usually when I see hepatic lipomas, they're single and they're very small. What about this case in this patient with abdominal pain? Mass tail of pancreas. The mass is large, it's cystic. There's some rim enhancement. Could it be pancreatic adenocarcinoma? Sure, but the enhancement would bother me. Could it be a neuroendocrine tumor? That's probably a really good thought. Rim enhancement, somewhat cystic. We do see cystic neuroendocrine tumors. MCNs occur in this location, but usually are not vascular. What tumor can be a great confuser? Well, you only have early phase imaging, so it's hard to look at the lesion, but when you look at it, there does appear to be some septations, and that would be a hint. And so when you think about it, you would think about MCNs. What about serous cyst adenoma? Serous cyst adenomas can have rim enhancement. You can get a draping sign. The cystic changes may not be that obvious, particularly on early phase imaging. And so when you think about it in this case, I've led you to water. 
There's the lesion, cystic with septations, rim enhancement. It's a tough call to say this is not a cystic neuroendocrine tumor. That would be a great thought. But this ended up at surgery being a serous cystadenoma. What about this case? There's a cystic lesion which appears near and coming off the pancreas. Again, you could say looking at this, if it wasn't from the pancreas, lymphangioma, seroma, cystic hygroma, but it's really arising and touching off the pancreas when you looked at all of the images. And when you see that, what should you think about? The classic pancreatic lesion that's cystic, that's exophytic, barely seems to touch the pancreas, can be large, is of lymphoepithelial cyst. And in this case, that's the answer. Cystic lesion arising or basically confusing you whether it's arising from the pancreas or not. You could think about lymphangiomas, hemangiomas, pseudocysts, all sorts of things. But when you look at all of the images, the coronals, the sagittals, you'll see it came off the patient's pancreas and was a lymphopathelial cyst, which are benign lesions. So with that, we've looked at 11 cases. 11 cases where you looked at two images and tried to tell me the answer. But at least it forced you to think about what the answers could be. Let us know if you like this format. We'll have it on YouTube. We'll have it on Facebook. Uh, if you like it, we'll do more of it. If you don't like it, I'll keep my day job. Anyway, with that, have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.